Welcome to episode 15 of URI Just Getting Started podcast. Today, we are joined by special guest, Charnay Zoll Norman, and she's the assistant coach of the URI women's team and a former WNBA player, among other things. Well, thank you for taking your time today to come in. Uh, how was practice? Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Practice was good. I think um, the, the women are getting focused. Coach Reese gave us a couple of days off, let us, you know, kind of recoup um, from the season, from from the game and the emotions of it. Um, and so now we're, we're focused, ready to see what today brings and tonight brings. Czyli w tym elemencie zespół wygrywa, no to wygrywa z reguły całe spotkanie. Było trzy rzeczy, punty prostata, punty po szybki ataku i obron. Po ostatnim meczu, um, our, nasz, nasz trener było mocno. <laughs> So, how was that? That was, that was pretty good. I said, I, I didn't realize they were booing that hard. Um, that was actually one of our Euro Cup games in Turkey, the game winning play. And uh, I have no like celebration skills. Like the most, I, the celebrating I do now on the bench is probably the most I've ever done in my life. Like I've got a fist bump, no chest bumps. I'm not really good at that. I get all awkward. I give you a fist bump and a couple of jumps. And like, that's it. That, that's all I had. That was my best. I hear how you started at URI, I think uh, you and Tammy had the same agent, and that's one of the reasons you're here today. But tell me about your relationship with Tammy. Uh, it sounds like you speak lonely of her, and you are a lot like her, and you look like her, from what I hear. And I believe you, too. Yeah, so it's funny. Um, so I didn't know Coach Reese, like, personally while I was at UVA, but literally everyone that was still there would be like, you look just like Tammy. You look just like Tammy Reese. And, you know, Coach Ryan did a phenomenal job. And, like, sidebar, I think this is where Coach Reese gets her relationship with our alumni from. Um, Coach Ryan did a phenomenal job of making sure that we knew the people that came before us and we knew who our uh, alumni were so that we could, you know, you, you understand that it's not just about you. And so we would always hear about the stories of, you know, the greats, Dawn and Tammy and everything. And everyone would always say, you look just like Tammy. And I'm like, all right, enough. Like, I get it. So then when I would come back home, um, when I wasn't playing WNBA, I was coaching with um, either the Philly Bills. And I was also working the basketball tournaments, USJN tournaments. And I would see Coach Reese all the time. And we were friendly, but I just didn't know her, you know, personally. Um, and I always heard such great things about her, about how she was passionate and intense and very similar to me. Like, okay, you know, I didn't notice that <laughs> just a little bit, yeah. um, just love the game. You know, people love her. She's, she's magnetic. And so when I was able to talk to her on the phone, she was kind of asking like, Hey, what are you doing? Are you retiring? Or are you not? And I was very on the fence about it. Um, and we do have the same agency. The agency that re that um, represented me as a player also has coaches, a coaches unit. And so I was really kind of on the fence. And then once I heard that Coach Ryan, uh, Coach Ryan, Coach Reese got this job, I just knew that I wanted to be with someone like that. Yeah. Right? I've always heard stories of if you get with a head coach that doesn't have the same values, doesn't have the same morals as you, it could be a very, very demanding and tough job to be in. And so I didn't want to do that. Right. I, I wanted to retire when I was ready. Um, I wanted to be with someone and enjoy this game because if I'm retiring, I'm retiring because I don't enjoy it as a player anymore. It's not fun to me anymore. And so I would never want to taint my idea of the game by coming into a situation as a coach that I didn't love. And so when coach Reese got this job and she said she was thinking about, you know, interviewing me, I just knew that, Hey, this is, this is where I want to be. I want to be here with her building something from the ground up to understand really, really what it takes to make a championship program and to, to build young women, you know, 17 to 22 years old and give them the same type of environment, the same type of support um, that I had when I was a, a college student. And so, you know, it was an opportunity of a lifetime for me and, and helped me make my decision to retire. Well, uh, you segue into a point where you guys have similar 
philosophies. And I have a video, a quick audio video of Tammy when I interviewed her uh, a little while ago. Let's listen to see how similar they are. I, I find them shockingly similar. When I say focus on the process, it's, it's our culture every day. I don't care about wins and losses. I truly don't. I could be last year we won at times and I was very upset because we didn't, we didn't get better. We didn't focus on our day to day. Well, I'm referring to when you said something to the point where you don't care. You care more how you won, not just winning. And it just sounds very similar to what she just said there. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think th this is the biggest thing, right? When, when you become, to become successful, you have to do things the right way consistently. And so there are some times in the game of basketball, in the game of life, right, that you're going to, you can, you're going to cut corners and you still might win. But you're not going to win the ones that you want to win. You're not going to get the job you want to get. You're not going to stay in the relationship you want to stay in if you can't consistently better yourself. And so, you know, Coach Reese understands that from all levels, right? She's done everything that you can do. And, and I was blessed to be able to play the game at the highest level of where I really wanted to play. And I understood that the game doesn't give you anything that you don't work for. And yeah. so when you don't work hard or you cut corners or you blame other people or you don't take accountability, those things come to bite you in the butt. And um, coach knows that in, in, in every aspect. And so I think that's really what she was alluding to there. Um, I'd like to get a little more into your dad. You had a really uh, nice story about how you were 10 and carried his gym bag. And he was yeah. really the reason. Let me Tell me about your special relationship with your dad. Yeah, he's the reason why I play. Um, when I was younger, I literally would just follow him around. And I just wanted to do everything that he did. And so when we were on the base in Germany and even when I was younger, like he would go play pickup in Philly, like on the, in the playground and in the park. And he just taught me how to play. And it was that it was, that was kind of our special time. Um, I was able to really have great quality time with him while we were on the court. And so, you know, from the second of picking up a basketball, I just remember loving it. I love the game. And then being able to spend that time with him made it even sweeter um, and so we just, we, we continued to go, you know, on, on road trips to AAU games, he would quiz me on different things and different scenarios. And what would you do here if you have the ball and you're down two? and, you know, we really made great use of our time. And so I think that that was probably one of the, the coolest things is to be able to make him proud and, and to play the game that we both loved um, for him to see me at every level. He's seen, he's been at a WNBA game. He was at my last professional game and he's seen me coach as well so he's he's seen me through every every level of my life so far and it's 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 really cool that we got to share in that this is something I, I heard you say and uh, everyone holds you accountable especially when you were at UVA and you I think you said you were on the bench once and someone had a turnover and you got blamed for the turnover or foul or something like that was that something that uh, you remember or Occurred. Yeah, so it was, it was actually an AAU when I um it was my first year with the Bells, and my my AAU coach I was I was on the bench I wasn't on the bench a lot, we only played like seven or eight players so um we only had seven or eight not we only played we only had seven or eight players, and you know our our backup point guard she turned the ball over and my coach is just he's ripping me like Chardonnay <laughs> what the heck and I literally was like I'm on the bench coach like what what do you want from me and he was like that that's your fault everything is a point guard's fault. And so once you realize that you'll be better off. And so I did. And, and I realized, well, you know what, if I, if I want to be a great point guard and a great leader, well, then it is my fault. And so maybe I'll help my teammates while I'm on the bench and I'll talk to them so that they don't have that turnover. And if you yell at me, all right, I got it. Right. I just, I just was able to take it. And so it really did set me up. Um, but that it was funny. I was like, coach, I'm on the bench. And then here we go with uh, your, Charneyisms. Uh, I, I told you you're hilarious in your past interviews. Uh, I have like a quote here. There's so many. I don't know where to begin, but there's a couple of them. But you said something like, I'm not fun to play with. I don't know if I could play with myself. I have an attitude. I'm a little moody. I just want to win. It's actually annoying, but it brings out the best in people. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's, that's telling um, in the sense that 
listen, I, I want to win at all costs, not cheating, but at all costs, if there's 40 minutes in a game for all of those 40 minutes, I have no friends. I don't care about people's feelings. I want us all to do what we need to do to win. And if I say something as a point guard to you, it may get emotional. And I, I tried my best to be able to speak to everyone in, in their own language, right? Mm-hmm. Not literally, but I mean, we all have different ways that are that we're able to be motivated. And so I tried to learn all of my teammates and understand that. But there were times when I would get a little fiery and I would need them to understand that I'm only being like this because I need us to win and I want us to win. And so that's not always fun. Sometimes you don't want to be held accountable. Sometimes okay. you just want to be able to make a mistake and say, oh, well, but that's not how I was. And, and I held myself to that standard. I was extremely hard on myself. So nobody needed to say anything to me. You could, but you didn't have to because I was beating myself up enough. And so, you know, I was able to be, again, blessed to be around great people. And everywhere I went, I've won. Um, we, we've made history in a lot of different places. And that was that was a blessing. I, I, God put me in, in, in the path of the right people and people who brought out the best in me as well. And so, again, it's not fun. It's not easy being a leader. You're not always liked. But those things help winners. But here at University of Virginia, uh, you just had a stellar career. Uh, and But one thing that was really funny, I, you beat Dawn Staley's assist record your freshman year. Yeah. Do you remember what she said? Uh, what she, she wasn't happy about it, was she? No. So um, <laughs> it, was, it was literally my goal walking on grounds was to, you know, beat Dawn's record. That was the, the, the one thing that gave me hope. Um, and so Coach Ryan called her after I beat the, you know, the freshman record. It goes, Dawn, like, listen, you know, Charnay beat your, beat your freshman assist record. And she said, this is what Coach Ryan tells me, we'll see what she does in four years. Click. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were the all-time assist leader for a little while in the nation. That's incredible. Yeah, I had a lot of people that made shots around me, for sure. So, you know, holding the ACC record was, was great. Um, something that's big I think that you know that's what we lose a little bit and and when you get scoring park cards point guards is you lose a little bit of that you know the the desire to make others better and the desire to actually get assists Um, then we have the uh, WNBA and that was a really big deal being drafted 29th um it how'd you feel about the WNBA I mean you've had so many accomplishments it's hard to compare it to UVA because you did so much there it's hard to compare it to playing in Poland, but where does it stack up with all the other things that you did? Um, so it was, it was different, right? Like I had, a, I played a different role, which has actually helped me as a coach understanding not only a starter and person who plays 38 minutes, but now somebody who has to come off the bench. Um, it was my lifelong dream, right? I'm, I'm old enough. And I guess I'll be telling of my age here a little bit, but I remember the day and where I was in every detail about the first WNBA game. I was, I was, you know, 11 years old. I, before that, I was dreaming of being the first woman in the NBA until we got our own WNBA. And so I remember what it feels like to now go from, oh, Charnay hits a shot for the Sixers to, ooh, I can play on the Los Angeles Sparks. And that was my lifelong goal. Every day that I worked, every day that I sacrificed, every party that I missed to sacrifice was because I wanted to live out that dream of playing in the WNBA and wearing that jersey. And so I was able to do that. My family was able to see me play. My grandmother, who, who has passed, unfortunately, she was able to see me play. She didn't make it to Poland or, or overseas. Wow. So that was the time she got to see me play professionally. And that was probably one of the proudest moments of my life is my family, who I had missed time with, was able to see what it all meant to me. And... Um, to be one of the 144 best players in the world is, is pretty cool. No matter cool. if you play one minute or, or 40 minutes, to be able to say that is, is an accomplishment in itself. So, Yeah, you were saying if you're 145, you're not in the WNBA. I remember you saying that one. Uh, you said you were excited, obviously, about being going to L.A. Sparks, but you were even more excited about the potential catching a glimpse of Kobe. Yeah. Kobe sighting. Yeah. Uh, was that a little hyperbole or was that in some ways? No, no, it, it was true because again, like I love seeing greatness. I love seeing people who excel in their craft. And that really doesn't, it doesn't matter to me what it is. It helps that it's basketball, but Kobe is one of those just 
like throwback type personalities, a dude that doesn't care who you are. I mean, I honestly believe like if his mom was on the court, he would bang her out of the way to go win a basketball game. Right. Yeah. He worked, but if you hear stories about how he was at, he has, you know, four workouts in a day, like everything is regimented. He would sacrifice everything to be the greatest that he could be. And I just I love being around that. I hope that I can soak that up in anyone that I'm around because it's, it's admirable to see that it's not easy. It's easy to work out once when you're in practice and, you know, to really enjoy the fruits of your labor while you're there. It is not easy to say I'm still not where I want to be yet even when you're the greatest player in the world. Yeah. And then another thing that was, I guess, equally cool was getting a gold medal for the United States, USA basketball. Yep. And uh, you said when you wore that uniform, people looked at you guys differently. How did that uh, work out there? It, it just must have been such an amazing feeling to wear There's that out, uniform USA and see the reaction. It was. I mean, to represent your country in anything is is really cool. Um, and I think for me, especially when I'm in the middle of something, I don't understand the full scope of what it is. And when we went to Tunisia and we were able to get off of the buses and there were people lined up, kids lined up, they just wanted a headband, anything. They were like, America, America. And I'm like, what? wow. Like the, 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 the ability to just change someone's life by wearing this jersey, right? Yeah. The, what, how they see Americans, what they think. Do they think that we're mean or nice? Or I can be the change in that, that if I'm just nice to one person, if I handshake, I give them something that they'll think of all Americans as a little bit better. And so it, it, it's, it's tough. It's a lot of pressure, but it was probably the, one of the coolest experiences because not many people get to say that they played for their national team and no. they've represented their country in some way. And again, my mom was in the air force for 20 years. My dad was in for four. So to be able to go and do that and represent my country in a way that they had and they've sacrificed was, it was awesome. Yeah. And also I, I tie a similar thing you said about being in the WNBA and humbling. And it was also humbling to come off the bench on team USA too. So I see a par I draw a parallel between the two from yeah. what you had said. Yeah. I mean, coming off the bench was different for me. I'd never done it before. So you, you gain different respect for people who can come off your colds while everybody else in the court is warm and you got to perform. You don't have the luxury of having a long leash. You got a short leash. So you got to figure out how to impact the game immediately. Um, so it was a learning experience, definitely humbling, a learning experience. And I've taken some of those, those lessons that I learned with USA basketball. I carry them even here with me today. I could see that being a great, uh, talking point for the players. They must be in awe of some of the things that you've done. And I'm you know, it's funny. I don't even think they know half of the things. Really? I don't even talk to them about my, many of my playing days. Wow. They need to start Googling you because um, they're, <laughs> they're pretty lucky. And, uh, I might tell some of them if I get, uh, I'm all in, by the way, in roadie women's basketball. I started with the Tammy uh, podcast before the season and I just started watching games and I have strong opinions of the team and why you won and lost. And I, I never thought I would be such a fan. So um, I'm an amb ambassador to women's basketball and uh, I'm on board for you. And I think I've brought a lot of other people there too on, some of our my social media pages. I'm very proud of the uh, roadie men's basketball fans that pivoted over to your team and your success, your, your amazing year. But here, you know, you in Poland, once again, I'm not even going to go into all the different accolades, but you stayed in one country for nine seasons. Now I've been interviewing a lot of players. Mm. Someone, Delroy James, one of the great URI players, he, he must be on... 11 or 12 different countries now right now he's playing in argentina and that's the same case with so many others they so the fact that you were able to stay in one country for nine seasons first of all it's great for you but how were you able to get that it's it's such a tough overseas basketball i have a, a different view of it and a new respect for the players because it's hard yeah and there's just a lot of things out of your control but but you stayed there for nine years what how were you able to do that um, I think I really bought into the culture and I think that the country as a whole, the basketball fans as a whole, they just really embraced who I was. They allowed me to be 
who I was. And that was in, in, in all aspects of life. Um, the one thing that I, I think I made sure of um, was to really prioritize what I wanted out of my overseas experience. And I was never about chasing money. I wanted to be in a league that paid me on time, a league that was competitive, that day in and day out, I would be playing great competition and getting better as a basketball player. And I wanted to be in a place where I can actually enjoy the culture that I could go and sightsee and talk to people and do all of that. And um, Poland was that. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally like my second home. I miss it almost every day, even being here. I mean, I, I felt, I felt at home in Poland and I would visit America, right? I was in America for three months. I was living in Poland. And so again, they, they embraced who I was. They allowed me, you know, time to learn the language and, and, you know, bought into, to me as a player and a person. And so they, they grew with me and I, I really appreciate the country, the basketball fans, um, the, the basketball organization for, for my time there. It's it, you, like you said, it's a very uncommon to stay in a country yeah. that long. But. And great players. I'm not even talking about people that are struggling to get a contract. These are great players that have been in so many different countries. All, yeah. all the top URI players, there's so many of them with that. And here you are nine years in Poland and, it, but it wasn't, easy and no. just going food shopping you were saying was like you didn't know what you were buying what you were eating mystery meat yeah, so. yeah. my first year i mean i was in an extremely small town Polkowice. they had americans before but it was a small town so it wasn't like people were you know speaking english so i was going into the store i had no idea what it was i mean this wasn't like oh you have a computer in your hand right like we were we were still in you know you got to pay for the Wi-Fi. You got to get a SIM card. So I'm like looking like, is that a chicken or a pig? Like, I'm not sure. So that that, oh, that was one of the reasons why I was like, all right, I got to get a tutor here so I can learn some of this language because I need to know, are you beating me for my money? I got to be able to count my change and I've got to be able to know what I'm eating. Well, you know, I relate to that because my mom wasn't such a good cook growing up and I wasn't sure if it was chicken or it was a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is Does it taste good? Do I need a little salt? All right, there we go. That's I said good. everything tasted good. It was the right <laughs> way to go. I don't think you got a choice in that one. Yeah. She's 87. She's going to hear this, so I'm, a, I'm in a little trouble here. But Yeah, watch yourself. Don't, don't blame <laughs> it on me now. I'll take my own stuff, not yours. Yes, uh, there's a lot <laughs> of um, And also, you're fluent in Polish, and I can't tell you if, how you, if you made any mistakes, because my Polish... Uh, language is not very good, but it sounded great to me at that press conference. Very cute watching you do that too. I, I made I made a lot of mistakes, and and basketball wise, I can understand almost everything in basketball. I think I forgot everything now, but um, you know, I, I I thought that was a sign of respect for me. To that's the least I could do, right? To be embraced like I was, but also, you know, this might be a Charneyism here, but I kept getting hit with screens. And I'm like looking back at my teammates and go, what is going on? And they're like, well, I have to translate screen and then right or left. And I'm like, you know what? Forget it. Tell me what the heck the word means and I'll figure it out myself. So you say it in your language. I'll translate it because I'm sick of getting hit. So um, a little bit was to get closer to my teammates, but also, you know, just to try and show an appreciation and, and, a, and a respect factor that if I'm there and earning money, I can also put forth the effort to learn the language. By the way, how's your French doing? Are you still in that, that kick? Awful. Okay. It's terrible. Um, I'm not learning much. I'm actually trying to teach my son. I told the girls they need to, they need to teach my son. So the girls have bought some stuff and coach A has bought him some flashcards. So I'm like trying to teach them, but I've got broken French. So every time they talk to him, they try and speak to him. I think I know why you call him coach A because his last name is very hard to pronounce. I'm not messing around with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me a, a hint on how to pronounce. I'm going to have to do some uh, work on that practice by myself. But um, Just call him double A. It's fine. Okay. Well, now you're assistant coach at Rhode Island, uh, and you're just fitting in like a glove here. You know, the, I watched you play Dayton twice. Uh, are they beatable, or are they just – you don't match up with them uh, – What's your point on, on that? Do you, you think if you played Dayton? them in the WNIT, you would beat them? Dayton? Yes. I think they're absolutely beatable. 
Um, I think that they're, they're almost like a weld oil machine being that they've been together so long and they have such experience that I do think that you need to be on your A game. And so what needs to happen is you've got to get those 50, 50 balls. You, you, you can't give up, you know, the wide open layups. You got to make them work for everything. And do we have the skills and, and the people and the personnel to do that? Absolutely. I believe so. Um, we just got to put forth that effort and we've got to be able to do it consistently for 40 minutes, which is tough, right? It's yeah. tough against a team that's, that's pushing you and that's, that's that good. Um, but it's possible. Anything's possible with this game. Well, according to my math, you beat them because you beat UMass and UMass beat them. So I'll call that a win. <laughs> oh, what? Like oh, sure. And you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I've had Rhode Island ranked number one in the country in the past yeah. with that type of logic. <laughs> well, we'll I, think, here, I think that like the degrees thing doesn't necessarily work, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> You're not going to argue with me on that. Not arguing with that one. What about the St. Joe's game? I watched that. It was very hard for me. And you said you were very disappointed. What yeah. would you do differently? Uh, you're obviously the better team. Well, we weren't. Yeah. We didn't win, right? The better team wins. I, I think that, you know, I, I'm not sure that we were prepared for how hard they were going to come out. Um, they were a, a bunch of tough-nosed, gritty kids that had nothing to lose. And that's always very, very difficult. Right. It's, it's extremely difficult when you play someone that has nothing to lose because they can have a great game. They go out there. There's no pressure. They have no tightness. They just go and play. And those kids, you got to give it up. got to give it to them that, that coaching staff and those kids, they came out and they capitalized on being physical, on winning, you know, the, the, the loose balls. They got offensive rebounds and they got everything that they wanted. We didn't give enough resistance. And so I think I hope that it was a learning um, lesson for us that, you know, we can't take plays for granted. You can't take possessions for granted and you've got to win those things that you can control. You can't control shots going in or out. You just can't, you can't control refs. You can't control calls. You, there's certain things in a game you can't control, but you can control your effort, your energy, and you can control how hard you go every single possession. What about next year's team? Uh, I'm seeing some facts that you're losing 70% of your scoring and we're all so vested, like I said, in the team. We want more. Do um, yeah. you have some people coming in? Can you give me like a little sneak preview of what to expect? I see some good pieces already. I also see some other pieces that are leaving, and it's, it's hard. You get attached to these players as a fan. Right. Obviously, our team is going to look a lot different, right, with, with losing four starters um, and losing Marta, who has been a staple in our locker room. Um, for, for four years or for three years that we've been here. But I think that our kids have been working extremely hard. So all of our young kids have been working and learning and seeing what it takes to get to that level, which I think, you know, is, is something that you have to stay for. You have to account for that, that they saw Manu and MP getting here every morning and, and working out, right. Getting better, whether, you know, Manu won a 10 player of the year, she comes back the next year hungry and still working on her game. Um, seeing Chanel being here, at, you know, working out in the mornings, trying to get better, those film sessions. So they, they were able to witness that. And they've been able to get some experience against those type of players every single day in practice. And so I think you can't account for that part, right? Yeah. Um, and we also have some kids coming in that are hungry, that are very, very hungry and willing to, uh, to come in and be what we need them to be. I think it's going to look different. Might not be as pretty all the time, but I know one thing, those kids are going to play hard and that they love the, they love the game of basketball. And so it's going to be, you know, coach Reese style of ball, intense in your face and, and, and ready to play. They're going to love the game. Yeah. We're going, we're going to grit it out. We're, you know, it's, it's going to be style of play really where we've got to go and we've got to go and get it. I love that. Do you guys have the horses to um, defend and what you did and, and beat everyone and possibly contend for a championship and make the NCAA, or maybe it's, this is going to be a growing year. I think, I think the plan always um, for me, and I know for coach Reese as well is, is to go and win, mm -hmm. you know, re rebuild is, is um, that's an excuse from the beginning. Like, yeah, it is going to be tough when you lose 70% of your scoring, that's tough. Right. When you yeah. lose the experience and the toughness, the grit, the understanding of what it means to work hard, when you lose that from seniors, it's very difficult. But also, hey, now other people have opportunities. And so, 
you know, you, you have a different style of play. You have a play where you come in and you gotta, you gotta earn every minute. So I think that that's really cool. Competition brings out the best in people. Well, if you tell me where coach A is, and if you tell me he's in Europe, then I'll feel better because when he goes there, good things happen. <laughs> he's actually not right now. He was downstairs oh, no. playing one of our practice guys. Um, he was doing that like when, when I came up here, but you know, listen, we're, we're, we're all grinding. Um, we, we understand we got to get some American kids here as well. We have some great kids, whether they're from, you know, Canada or Europe or France or America. The one thing for sure is anybody that puts on that jersey is going to play hard. Yes. Uh, um, is Tahin uh, coming back? Is she eligible? Uh, I, I, it's confusing. I hear that they're all leaving, but she's a junior, a redshirt junior. So she could, can she come back? Um. To be honest, I think possibly with the COVID year, I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't even talked about coming back or not coming back because, you know, as you know, we're waiting for tonight to see where we'll land. So I don't think that that's been a conversation at all. Um, but we're planning it as if she, she had her senior night in. Yeah. We never. I can't wait for tonight. Selection Sunday. And no. How do you feel about it? You, you seem like you feel pretty good uh, talking before this uh, podcast. So I hope no so. Trainer, right? I, I mean, you know, listen, a 22 and six record. I think that that's good enough to get into the WNIT. I'm, you know, prayerfully. Obviously, we had a couple of hiccups towards the end, but um, the girls worked for a great season and they, they put their, you know, their heart and soul out on the court. And so I hope that they're rewarded with the WNIT. Um, and we, we have more games to play. Yeah. Uh, can you give me a layout of the coaching staff? Uh, there's a picture here. I'm blocking Tammy. My bad. What each person does, um, and obviously Tammy is the, the leader, the commander-in-chief, but maybe you could tell me about the others so we could all get to know Rody Bastop. Okay. Oh, let, let's go left to right or right to left. Let's, let's get to know these your coaching staff. All right, so we'll go Coach A first. So A, obviously, is our Frenchman. Um, He's Mr. Suave, okay, very, very, like, cool, calm, collected, very, like, philosophical. He thinks of the game in so many different ways, like, very, very cerebral in how he thinks about everything and very, like, just quiet. He's, he's a quiet man. Anything that he says, you know that he's thought of first. He's almost never reactionary. Um, he does, obviously, I mean, we're, we all do recruiting, so he does international recruiting. He also does our offenses. Um, and make sure that he, you know, he, he kind of dives into what he thinks will, will be best for us offensively. Um, Corey is our director of basketball operations. I mean, nothing would run without him. So he does like our travel. He makes sure that we eat, that the kids get meal money. Um, he helps us in everything that we do with recruiting, with paperwork, with anything. I mean, Corey is our, is our handyman. Essentially he does, he, he makes sure this, this baby runs. Um, coach Reese, I mean, the head of the snake, right? She's, yeah. she's, she is the engine. She is the reason that we're all here first and foremost. She's the reason that this program is successful and, and she brings the energy every day, which I'm a little embarrassed to say, right? Like I'm one of the younger uh, on staff, but when she comes in, man, it's like a freaking, lightning bolt to the room like everybody's like pick up your energy because you better not let her have more energy than you you know well, super positive on the way there so she's getting out a little energy when she's singing in the she's car singing, she's got a little bit of coffee she has a little bit of coffee <laughs> and red bull everything's done <laughs> you better yeah. you just better be ready to bring it um but she is also the the greatest thing about coach i think is her heart she's probably one of the sweetest people i've ever met um and how she thinks about others and how she really does want us all to succeed. Um, I can barely call her a boss, but like she, cause she doesn't look at herself that way. She is always giving other people credit for her success. She's always making sure that we're all good. And we're like, coach, are you good? Like literally you're the boss here. Are you good? And she, she wants us all to just be happy and be growing, um, which is, which is really, really cool. She's extremely selfless. Next we have one. Uh, just wanted to bring out a point. When she won Coach of the Year, she said it wasn't Coach of the Year. It was all of you that were. Staff of the Year. Um, so it matches what you're saying there. Sorry. I mean, and she, she did that. I mean, she did that 
across the board though. Like it wasn't even just staff, like our coaching staff. I mean, she was thanking people from our administrative assistant to our SID to anybody that's involved in our program. She was like, congratulations. We got it. We did it. And that just goes to show she is. It was, it was genuine. It wasn't like, oh, let me say this because it's like politically correct. No, like she really felt that she, she understands that we all make a puzzle and each piece is important. And she is willing to um, show that. Because other people, she feels like doesn't don't get it, yeah. And uh, that's just the kind of person she is, you know. She she shines her light on on all of us. Um, okay, so Stefan Stefan is our um, GA. He is, I mean, he is extremely helpful. He comes in to help us rebound. He helps with our workouts. He helps us with our scouting reports, making sure that they're all good. Um, he helps Corey with a lot of the, the logistic things. Um, again, like a handyman, he, he's helping us in every way that you can think of. And then Shani, um, Coach Shani, she is, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is she's really, she's a lot like Coach Reese as well. Um, a little bit more so than me, I think. Really? Uh, she is very like, when I say passionate, I mean, that's the, that's the frick to my frack there. She, she gets after it. She gets after our kids. She's in charge of like our defensive effort. Um, and obviously again, recruiting we, as we all do. And so she is, if you, if you hear her talk about defense, that's the one thing she's always going to talk to you about our, our defense first and making sure our, our energy and aggression um, and effort is there. And so, you know, she's, she works with the guards with me as well. So we, we work with positional workouts with guards and she's just probably one of the, the best, like on the fly basketball minds that I've been around in a, in a very long time. She's able to make adjustments quickly. She sees the game. She remembers plays really well. Um, and so again, it, it's funny because our three women are the, the, um, let me, how can I put this nicely? We are the most passionate. We are extremely intense and we are probably the most three inappropriate on staff. I mean, the, um, our three men are like very calm. They're like, okay, a little bit more quiet. Us three are like in your face, better get it done. What's up type of people. So looks like the players eat it up. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. They love it. At, at any given time, it could be any of us. They're like laughing at all of us. They're like, yeah. look at these guys. but um, you know, as a staff, I can tell you that I don't think I, I ever could um, envision having this much fun. I thought like coming into an office was going to be boring and I wouldn't have fun. I mean, I have, I genuinely have fun with everyone on our staff. We we're friends. We have group chats. We're talking, we're laughing. Bus trips are just, they're, they're funny for us. We're, we're able to relate to each other. We're able to navigate each other. And I think that that's a really cool dynamic. Of course you like bus trips. You won 22 games. You know, a lot of those were W's. Yeah, and, but you know what? The funny part is we're talking about everything that you can talk about. I mean, WNBA to overseas to men's basketball to movies. Coach is a big movie buff. So we're talking about movies and we're making fun of each other. And it's it, it's a great time. Um, here we go. I couldn't find pictures where you looked alike, so I just used the same uniforms. But <laughs> I, I found I heard it from you. So I just did some research yeah. and uh, you, you guys do look alike. I have. To, I didn't think of it until I heard you say it, but I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> yep, we sure did. a little bit. Yep. Yeah, that was a good one. That was Halloween too, and nobody. I knew that I bought the jersey, and I was like, "Guys, let's let's dress up for Halloween in the office." And they're like, "Come on, man!" Like they they're looking at me. I'm not the youngest. Shani is, but they're looking at me like, "Come on, like what? Bring this baby stuff." I'm like, "Come on, let's do it. Let's dress up." So everybody dresses up, and I come wow. in like Coach Reese. It was funny. She looks pretty intense, and you look pretty intense right there. But she, maybe a little more, but if you could say that. But. She was in game. She was in game, you know. Yeah. Well, that she's was using my acting too. skills. I know her acting career, and she's played herself in, in one movie, if I can remember. <laughs> you have a beautiful family. Uh, I you. love your Instagram pictures and the way you uh, talk about your wife. Um, and it, it's pretty brave. Uh, what you did and, and you talk in this quote it's very matter of fact about how um when you did uh reveal uh your wife to the public it wasn't that big of a deal and it to me it's such a brave thing to do anytime you do anything like that you put yourself out there in anything um but can you comment on what it was like when you when that occurred 
Yeah. So, you know, that, that article was a little bit of a sham in the sense that, I mean, I've never been really in the class out, outside of in college, right? I think, yeah. you know, college was a different story, but I've been married um, since 2009. I've been with my wife since 2008 and never once has it ever been a, an, a question. Everyone knew who Rita was. I've had my name on my Jersey, um, her name, her last name. So Zold Norman, I'm hyphenated with her last name um, on my Jersey for years. And so the interview was about pride, oh, like no. the, the pride parade. And he, um, the, the, the journalist or the reporter just tried to make it as if it was a coming out thing. And so, so, you know, it, I don't think it was a coming out. I had, everybody knows, everybody knew yeah. it was no secret, but again, you know, I think we have to get to a place in society where there is no such thing as a coming out, right? Like who cares? Yes. <laughs> I have a wife. Okay. That's no one else's business. You understand that if you know me, you know that she's my wife. If not, who cares who, who's in, who's in my house? Who care? Who cares who I love? Right. I think we have to get to that point because yes. um, I think we'll all be in a better way, but yeah, I mean, if I was straight, I wouldn't be like, Hey, I'm a big hetero right here. No, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was a basketball, I basketball coach. You're yeah. a beautiful family. And that's a, a good, not too many people could say that today uh, to have some, a relationship and you have um, a little whippersnapper. I think yeah. that's not fake. There's someone in there. Yes. You have yeah. another whippersnapper that your uh, wife is holding on to. And we're going to be going to that on the next slide. I, I hope you didn't see it. I, mm -hmm. but you and I have something in common, my friend. And uh, here we go. Oh, I am a Yorkie guy, you know, lots of people teach yeah. me, about, they want guys to have big dogs, but I, she's not alive anymore, but I just love Yorkies and your dog Sorry. is adorable. Thank but you. That's something best companion. Have. I'm a little partial while your dog is so, well, first of all, what's your dog's name? Nico. Nico. Wow. That's sophisticated. That's <laughs> Excuse me. Well, Allie. <laughs> Just a little cuter. Maybe it's the uh, purple bow that I put on. Oh, it's, it's the bow for sure. Yeah, and uh, this is a little more of less basketball because people ask me, is this podcast college basketball? I'm not interested. I'm like, it really isn't. What we talked to today, I'd say about 70% of it is just about people and succeeding and views on, on life. We're not talking about um, technical aspects of college basketball. And here, I wanted to get your take on what's going on, sadly, in Ukraine yep. and Poland, since you are so close to the cultures. And um, is the news accurate, or is, are they missing some things that we should know about being someone who lived in that region for nine years? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in, in regards to, from what I've seen from the Polish people and their acceptance of, of the Ukrainians coming in and their willingness to go and help, um, I saw a, a picture where they said that Polish moms were leaving the strollers for any Ukrainians that were coming with children. And I think oh. the, the situation that I've had and the experience that I've had with Polish people was that they are embrace. They will embrace you. Um, they embraced me for nine years. Right. And, and I was just a, a young, a young American coming in, but they, they've made me feel at home and they are extremely loving when they get to know you. Now they got a little hard exterior, but when they get to know you, they will, they will love on you like family. And so, um, I think it's sad. Anytime we see children crying, we see mothers and fathers being torn away from, from their kids. And, um, and when we see war, I, I, I think that we should be past that now. Um, yeah. and we obviously are not. And so while it's, it's, it's heartbreaking for me to see some of those images, no matter who it is, but especially, being that, you know, I, I know some of these places. I know people who live on the border. I know, um, I know Ukrainians. I also know Russians who, who feel some type of way. And so for me, it's very, very difficult. I can understand that. Uh, no one could really uh, predict how Poland rose to the occasion. I mean, he would, yeah. you would probably think they would rise to the occasion to some extent. But are you surprised at how far they've gone? I mean, it's unprecedented. Or no, no. not. No, no. All of the people that I know, again, I, I called it home. Right? I really felt like I was at home. 
Um, I felt like I was part of the family. I felt like when I left a team, I didn't just leave the team. They would still come and see me and in big goods. And um, they were extremely loving, extremely embracing. And so I think that now that was for a basketball game. Yeah. <laughs> Right. This is this is life. And so I, I had no doubt um, that they would be capable of doing it and that they would be willing to do that. I do think it's extremely telling that we're able to um, they're able to take in. What is it like half a million Ukrainians? And they said that there's not many shelters built up, that they're just allowing people to come into their homes. And so I think that, um, hopefully we can learn from this and understand that when there's refugees, they're leaving a country for a reason. Um, yeah, they're leaving because they want to get out of a bad situation and they're scared for their lives and their children's lives and futures. So I think Poland made a statement here about how we can uh, how we can help. But yeah. here's the contentious question. Who's better, MJ or Kobe? <sighs> All right. Sorry. So, no, <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's 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 hard to say. Listen, I'm a Kobe fan. Right. I, I love Michael Jordan. I'm an MJ fan. Yeah, I love what Michael Jordan did for the game. I think it's very difficult to say who's better in terms of their era. But if I would say someone, I'm going to go with Kobe only because he took, he was able to learn from Michael and now change that in different eras, right? It wasn't just a beat you up era. Kobe also had to be successful in this era of basketball, which is completely different from back in the day, right? So he learned all of these things, but he also had to adjust his game and who he was. So I'm going to go with Kobe. Oh, well, we're, I say Michael, so we're going to have a problem here. And uh, I had the same thing. We're good. Yeah, well, well, Tammy and I butted heads. I like 70s music. She likes 80s. And we you're just not winning agree. She, no, you're not. And she's you're still not change. And I... I want to get at her again because I have some comebacks for her, some bands, but that's <laughs> another not another day. That it's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Here's a um, final question. Okay. You talk about how beautiful uh, UVA is and as a campus, but you're in a beautiful campus right now. Hmm. So what's prettier? You or I or? <laughs> uh, oh no, that look, I've seen that look before. When uh, your high school guy crossed you up, you had, you had a pretty funny thing to say to him. Remember that? I mean, yeah. Like, he's going to bring me on his podcast to bring that up. Like, I was like, come on. Like, <laughs> too much. I know what you said, too. <laughs> outside and something with thunder. Come on, man. Sorry. Come on. Just, just making up stuff right on his podcast. I'm like, look, I don't want to embarrass you, bro. But come on now. Yeah. Um, that no, listen, is pretty intimidating. It's it's hard to compete here with... with uh, with Brody's campus, right? It, it's very difficult. The New England weather, you have beautiful time. When you can get on the quad, you can play Frisbee, but then how beautiful it is with the snow. Mm -hmm. You posted something beautiful with one of the buildings in the snow. So I'm a big Instagram fan of your profile. Yeah. I try, you know, I try and dibble and dabble here. I, I do a little yeah. photography. I'll, I'll try and get angles now. Never ask me to take a picture because I'm taking four or five. I'm making sure you look your best. I'm getting all angles. I go, I go all in for that. I do the same thing and people don't like to hang out with me for that reason. What? But I would love on. it. Make sure I look good. Don't, don't snap one <laughs> photo. And now I'm like, come on. I missed the moment. Let's go, Scott. Come on. We're here. <laughs> it's an hour now. It's, it's just a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned so much today, and uh, thanks for you two being in today. I'll be dropping this uh, podcast early next week. I, I wish you the best of luck tonight. With the Thank you. Crossing my fingers. I don't think I have to, but we'll be watching closely. And I like I promise we'll culminate this um, whole thing with uh, the miking up video to end this. And I'll say goodbye to you now and invite you on any other time. It was just so much fun and so educational and Great to have you today. Thanks so much for coming in, Charney. No, thank you. And thank, thanks for having some of those cool uh, cool pictures and throwbacks. That was a uh, walk down memory lane a little bit. So thank you. We'll put that three-point shot up. Uh, I'm going to tweet it out. Get, make sure, get all your players uh, to sign up, subscribe to YouTube because I want they don't listen to me. news from you. That's they, don't, they don't listen to me now. Oh, okay. So, Charney, let's tune in to uh, your mic'd up and uh, get everyone going. And good luck tonight, you guys. I can't wait to watch some more roadie basketball. Thank you. Me neither. <laughs> I'm going to give you some.
Yes, Butters. Bye bye, Butters. Bye bye, Chanel. Who's the sleeper today? Who's the sleeper today? Go get that, go get that. My A said no points on my watch. No points on my watch. Okay, come off, eyes up and out. Yeah. And now that her. And now that her. Plug. They'll do a little bit of everything. They're gonna plug, they're gonna hard hedge, they'll flat hedge, they'll switch, okay? Did you miss that over the roof? <laughs> Five, six, okay, doubles. Oh, good fell behind, I got you, Becca. Bang that baby, start us up. Oh, give me that. Hey. 